Hello everybody and welcome to my dumb little channel and welcome to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a game that I think is a strong contender for the best worst game ever made. Uh, I suppose it's probably easier to show you than it is to explain, so why don't you come on in, have, have a seat, take, take a look around, uh, watch this. Alright folks, for those of you who are not familiar with this game, it, uh, well, you basically get to build and design your own fleet of ships throughout various eras of naval history, starting, well, primarily focused around battleships, you know, the Dreadnought era and later. Uh, 1890 is the first year you can play all the way up until, well, you can start all the way up until 1940, I don't know. Uh, I guess you could probably continue on for endless amounts until then, but I usually tend to start around 1900 and 1910. I don't like to do much later than that because, uh, well, this game has a really unique way of giving you a different starting position every time you play it, and that is it simulates the game every month, every turn, all the way until your starting date. So if you start in 1940, there is a solid chance you'll wait about half an hour for your first game to load. Um, yeah, again, it's, 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 it's out of early access now. It is now in full release, and this is still the way they chose to do it. This is just one of many really cool things that developers did with this game. <laughs> including announcing that after six months of being on full release that they will no longer be supporting the game. Uh, which, gosh, if you just head over to their Steam page now and you look at the uh, the history, it's, it's a lot of hotfixes in there, man. A lot of hotfixes that fix the problems that, you know, that they need to iron out, but then creates all new ones, which is really cool. But anyway, enough shitting on the game. Let's actually play the thing. Um, again, 1910 start date, leaving the normal difficulty, and, uh, AI I definitely want to leave as historical as well, and, uh, we're going to be creating our own fleet here. Uh, that last option down there on the menu, by the way, was to allow the AI to share your designs with, um, with nations that are controlled by the computer, but I don't like to do that because I don't want to end up fighting my own ships out at sea. Um, all right, first steps first. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start designing our fleet. I need to, I'm going to start off with battleships. We have a couple of options here. Um, the Dreadnought one, the USA one, is, is usually not that great. So, uh, you... Although... Is it is good speed? It's twenty one knots, but or twenty two knots, but so is Jed Knot three. Um, and yeah, the Dread Knot three is considerably larger as well. It can I can build it up to uh, thirty three thousand five hundred tons. So that's what we're gonna go with. This is by far the coolest part of the game, in my opinion. Just being able to design the ships, um, you know, as time goes on and as you work up your tech tree, you can improve propulsion, you can improve, um, you know, the exhaust with the funnels, uh, you can do, let's see here, no, okay, backup engines, auxiliary power, switch this over to turbines. We're going to do forced induction for the boilers, I think. It's the heavier option, but um, it makes your engines far more efficient. I'll give you guys a chance to read some of this stuff. Um, oil. I think... I want to see how efficient these engines are before I do the forced induction, though. Uh, I do want to do hydraulic steering because it's slightly better, and you know, I've already got the semi balanced rudders, so that's going to improve the, uh, the maneuverability. So, with the hydraulic steering, I get the faster turning, and it also doesn't uh, negatively affect. Uh, the turning radius of the ship, because these battleships, these things are. Pfft, 
a nightmare to turn. Uh, even if you get them, you know, going like on par with the speed of your battle cruisers or your even your light cruisers, you know, the things to do, they just still they take forever to turn. Um, yeah, with corrupt armor three, that makes everything yeah it's significantly stronger and lighter. Uh, which will undo some of the weight that we added with the torpedo. Uh, let's see with the anti-flooding. Yeah, all this stuff, it makes it heavier, but like, like, it really matters when you're getting just pummeled by salvos from the enemy. Alright, we need a main tower. I'm going with something that's, uh, that's a bit more realistic, honestly, to 1910. Because if you look at this thing... That's, uh, that's no mounts. Oh, shut up. There. Okay. Quit crying at me. Yeah, that's that's a little too modern uh, for 1910. That's, like, stuff that the, uh, that this era of ships was, like, refit with uh, between the First and Second World Wars. And uh, not at all like something that they would have had uh, in 1910. So we'll do these weird little cage masts, which, um, if I'm not mistaken, wouldn't these things snap in heavy seas? Or, like, isn't there a case where uh, an American cruiser or battleship or something like that got hit by a rogue wave and it nearly snapped both of their masts off? I can't, but there's a photo. If I find it in editing, I'm going to find that photo and I'm going to put it right here. Unless I forget, in which case there won't be anything. But anyway, let's make us a big old ship. There you go. One more collapsible mass just for you. Hmm. I actually want to see what's up with our funnels. Yeah, I'm going to do all this stuff and then probably, like, we'll cut to here it is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll show you more. We'll see. Well, here it is. That's just kidding. Uh, well, no, not really. I, I probably will cut to this. That took a long time. That was, mm, yeah, I've been doing this for like an hour. Uh, but you won't see that in the video. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give this thing some bullets, and then we're gonna move on to build uh, the rest of the navy, and then then we're gonna go out and uh, we're gonna we're gonna shoot shit with it. Doesn't that sound cool? <laughs> let's go, let's go shoot shit. All right, with the class of battleships complete, now it's time for some battle cruisers. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to slap a bunch of guns on this thing. Go ahead and put a gun right there. And there. Hmm. You know, this doesn't seem like it's going to be big enough to hold all the guns I really want. There's a lot of guns, but I want more guns. I want bigger guns. I want... I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a bigger boat. All right, battle cruiser type two. How many guns can I stick on you? Yeah, I want to go for super firing. I want to see if they'll get away with setting three of these guys on here. You can go on there. There you go. Yes. <laughs> power. Ridiculous power. God, that's not going to be unbalanced at all. Behold. In all of its freaking glory. Oh, I wonder how many more guns I can put on this thing. Aw, oh, yeah. Alright, well that'll do, pig. I think that's, uh... Yeah, I'm going to try to get that pitch in that roll just a little bit better, but... She's already super expensive. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I wish I could have put more guns on the front than in the back, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this thing works out. All right, rinse and repeat, boys and girls. You know the deal. Uh, there's our little light cruiser here all tidied up and as balanced as it's going to be. That engine efficiency, I gotta do something about that. 
All right, well, we've checked off the battleship, we've checked off the battle cruiser, we've checked off a light cruiser, and now to finish off our first round of ships, uh... Yeah, you guys can lay mines if you want to. Uh, for the first round of ships, we now have uh, destroyers as well. And um, we'll build some submarines in that little separate menu, and I think we'll get right into trying to blow shit up. Now we should be able to start constructing our ships. Look at that. We got the Tennessee, the Delaware, the Brawler. Uh, well, we got the, oh, well, because we refit the brawler to fix a couple of issues. I think the engines, uh, the, uh, yeah, the engine efficiency wasn't so great. There we go. Got rid of the inefficient one. Uh, yeah. And then we've got the, uh, class of destroyers, the fragile. <laughs> so we'll get, start getting these guys built up. All right. Now we're taking a look at the political situation here. And basically I, I got to find one of these people to fight, man. I got to, uh, I got to pick somebody who's on par with me and kick their ass so I can build some prestige. Hello, China. Austro-Hungarian Empire. Interesting. Um, oh my god, we're all the way at the bottom. <laughs> uh, all right, time to take a quick look at our finances here. We've got the crew training up. We've got the uh, expansion of our shipyard. Let's see how many of these battle cruisers I can build. And of course we're fine on money, but uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of tonnage left over. Looks like we'll maybe just be able to get away with building one. Let's go ahead and do that. And boop. All right. That's a lot of ships under construction. All right, we're into the new year by a whole month, and we are also doing absolutely nothing. So I've tried to reorganize a lot of my fleet. They're kind of all over the place. And I wanted to start setting up some tasks for uh, task forces. I say that five times fast. Most people probably could. Uh, but yeah, I want to set up different task forces around different uh, stations, if you will, different ports around the world to prepare myself for, uh, you know, any kind of foreign aggression, whether that's in the Atlantic or the Pacific or in the Gulf. Um, one thing I tell you I did not think of when I started in 1910 was that I... <laughs> Uh, I, the world, all of us are are gonna have to wait until 19 freaking 14 to use the damn Panama Canal. So that was uh, that was a fun rehashing of history there that I got to learn all over again. <clears throat> Pay attention in history, folks. You might you might save yourself a few hours of gameplay in a video game. Uh, great lesson, John. All right, I stopped recording for, a, well, quite a few hours. We are now in March of 1914, and I finally figured out who I want to go beat up. It's, it's, it's the poor little empire of China. Yeah, if you know anything about history around this time, they're, they're not doing so hot. They're not doing so hot. Things, things aren't going so swimmingly for China in 1914. Uh, and, well, we're about to make it just a little bit worse. Because now we have the power of the Panama Canal, which makes it, uh, you know, not so much of a nightmare when I have to move ships between the Pacific and the Atlantic. And, uh, well, we're going to be using that right now to transfer some of my ships from Miami and Pensacola uh, to reinforce those that I had already in San Francisco and San Diego. And we're going to send these bad boys over to fuel up in Manila, and then we're just, we're just going to wreck those... Those poor little ships that they have, uh, which I'm not really sure. I know how many they have, but I don't know what they are. I don't know how old they are. Okay. Oh, well, well, well. It looks like our pressure is working. The Imperials really don't like us now. Well, let's keep up that pressure. Let's make them hate us because I think you need 100% negative relationship. Um defeat united states failed to gain oh my god i like what <laughs> we were kicking their asses man it's like sometimes they just fail for no reason these uh 
these little missions. All right, cool. Good to know. Anyway, back to beating up China, or what we're trying to trying to beat up China, the Empire of Japan, not modern China. We're not uh, we're not trying to start anything controversial. We're talking about uh, you know, way back in the day. Even you guys don't like the imperial boo imperialists, right? Right? Is that a right? Uh, look, China, please don't blacklist me, okay? I, I I'm pretty sure I need to stay in your good graces for in the future when you take over the world and I start making YouTube videos about how great communism is. Oh, <laughs> what? You know, I think we've put ourselves in a pretty good position to go ahead and take on the empire of China and to uh, go ahead and start turning up the heat on these guys a little bit. See if we can't get them out into the open and strike. Hmm. Is false flag operation a choice? Can we, uh, let's, let's just, can I do that? All right, guys. Well, in keeping with my usual length for these videos, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and split this one in half right here. But uh, definitely check out the second half. We're going to be, well, we're going to be going to war. There's going to be battles. You're going to see things explode. You're going to see all kinds of crazy shit happen. So, uh, yeah, yeah, come on. Come on down to the next one. It should be up by the time you're watching this. Uh, see you then, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody.